wanted to do another vinyl record focused video and I wasn't sure what to do next but I thought it would be fun to do some of my favorite album designs um, and I just thought that would be fun because it really um, throws in the whole art aspect to music and how things come together. These are my favorite vinyl covers that I own but there's definitely other album covers that I know are like famous for the design and you're probably like why wouldn't she mention this or that one but basically this is what I have and this is I personally really like reading about album cover design and how the artist and photographer meet with the musician and they can talk about theme and concepts behind music and how that can develop into art and photography so I wish there was more information on it, but honestly, like three out of the five records I was going to show you guys today have like little to no information on the internet about them. Um, some of the artists, they'll state, but I go to research them and they barely have like a website or anything. And a lot of these albums are from like the 70s, so that could be another reason, but I guess I will put out into the internet what I do now and hopefully you guys will enjoy learning about it. So anyway, one of the first ones I thought of was this Moody Blues cover in search of the Lost Chords. So we'll show you this. The thing about this is that um, it was created in 1968 um, by an artist named Phil Travers. And their whole theme around the cover, what they wanted to be a meditation focused some things basically that I like about it obviously the colors um, I love the pink purple orange sky um, it's very mystical and then this kind of creepier bottom half um, you can see how the artists basically separated them um, we have the child in a womb and then a skull so kind of bringing up a concept of birth and death and then towards the center, just kind of this uprising, almost like ascendance of this figure. I did read that he used watercolors to create this, which kind of explains the blending of colors and things. If you listen to this particular album too, um, you can kind of see the connection with the art. For example, songs like Departure, Voices in the Sky, The Word, Legend of a Mine, it's all very kind of focused in that same area. So then over here we have this symbol. And basically this symbol is um, for anyone that practices meditation or yoga, the word of mantra, it's a word of power. One cover that I always found super just like intriguing to look at is this one. It is the Super Tramp cover for Breakfast in America. First glance, I didn't realize all the symbolism in this piece, but learning about it was so interesting. A little background on this one, it was created in 1979. Designer was Mike Dudd and Mick Haggerty. We have this waitress figure overlooking Manhattan, but this cityscape is not buildings, as you can kind of see. They're white painted shapes of things like pancake syrup bottles, egg crates, coffee mugs. The waitress is in the form of the Statue of Liberty and instead of holding the lantern at the top she has her little orange juice so it's kind of a symbolic comparison there. The whole scene is through an airplane window which I also think is really cool and on the back it has a picture of the band out to breakfast of course. Did some research. This was actually at a place called Burt's Madhouse in New York and Manhattan. The record itself has also the kind of Statue of Liberty symbol. If you know anything about Super Tramp as a band, they kind of have a focus on the Freedom Liberty stuff. Imagine by John Lennon is another album cover I really love for its use of photography and kind of blending of two photographs. 
I really enjoyed learning about this one in the John Lennon and Yoko Ono documentary. I'm blanking on the name of it. Above Us Only Sky. In that documentary, Yoko Ono has a little scene where she explains a little bit how she wanted this whole concept of of John Lennon in clouds and at first it was kind of like a cloud gape in his eyes and then they changed it to do more of like an overlay and I just really like how it came out and this photo of John Lennon on the cover was taken by Yoko Ono with the Polaroid camera just like at a hotel that they were at as well as this one was at an angle so you could kind of get the feel of him like looking up at the clouds on the back there is a secret little quote right here and it says imagine the clouds dripping dig a hole in the garden to put them in Yoko 63 so I really like all of the Beach Boy album covers um, just for the whole beachy kind of foresty vibe of them and they're all like very intricate as well like as you open this one this is Endless Summer This was a 1974 album and the artist that did this is actually really interesting. His name is Keith McConnell and he was a combat artist so he really captured activities and motions of the troops at war. Yeah, basically the only kind of things I was able to research about this was that he took a lot of the concepts from their previous album covers and kind of just put it all into one. graphics and the designs are definitely a certain style that you can tell are really specific to the artist that created them um, and I think it's really important to have your own style so that's another reason I really love this one okay so the next one is um, a, the Doors album cover and this one came out in 1967 I think I was always really intrigued by this cover. I didn't understand a lot of the themes and the message behind it. I think listening to the songs really helps kind of explain things. But basically the cover is depicting a New York theme or theme. Um, it was photographed by Joel Brodsky, the street performers in New York. And this one here is actually a random cab driver that they paid to pose in this picture. Just kind of capturing the feeling of New York and kind of artistry and the streets. And I really like the back cover too. Just this little interaction between two strangers. Next one is Goodbye Yellow Brick Road Elton John. So I'll show you guys the cover and then there's all these little intricate designs on the inside covers too. Yeah, so it's a three panel design. Also the back. The whole concept of the cover was leaving kind of the grunge of New York and stepping into more of a farm-like, more like a peaceful environment. The artist is Ian Beck. Elton John had this image. He showed another photo for inspiration of a friend taking a picture that looked as though it was stepping into a frame. So that was like the whole concept. And they picked it up really well, obviously exaggerated it and made um, it made it look super cool and I've actually redesigned this on a vinyl because I just enjoy it so much or the inside here they have images for every song which I think is so fun 